everyone welcome back to another video and in today's video i'll be going over five major tips that you can use to improve in 2v2 and in the rest of the game i'll be taking a replay from a diamond one that i found on ballchasing.com so make sure to get your notes and pens ready and let's get into it i'll see you guys in the video Alrighty, now that we are in the replay five things i will be going over in this replay are rotations and positioning what man are you aka are you first man second man Reading options, like play options, like what are the opponents and what are your options in a play. Four is counterattacks, and five is speed of play. And I'll be going over individual things as well as the big picture, right? Because it's always cool to have big, big picture when you're thinking of details. So, as we saw in the very beginning, uh, his teammate was pretty much AFK. And that was not epic. But if we go to this main goal here, right... And we're thinking of, like, in this exact play, like, in the, this exact scenario here, we have two back on our side, because web guy, we'll call him web, uh, just got back from doing whatever, and is actually playing the game now. And our teammate here, or our person that we're watching here, is rotating back post. So, if we actually take a look at what's happening on the rest of the field, our rotations and positioning are kind of off, but kind of on. Our off part is our teammate here in front of us. He is the first man he should recognize that he should be pressuring this ball. And he does that in a second. And our next person, our, our main character here, we'll say, uh, is pushing, it looks like, back post. I believe they went back post. So this is very good. This is very good coverage for Diamond 1, the average player. This is pretty good coverage. And the reason I grabbed Diamond 1 is because it has the highest amount of players, aka it's the average rank. And, uh, yeah. So now... In frame two here, we'll say, what man are you? Right here, we're second man. And a few questions I always ask myself when I'm playing the game. I'll... Main questions I ask myself are, for rotations and positioning, is what section of field can you cover? What section of the field am I covering? Uh, what play can I make on the ball? Slash, what can I cover as well, as I said? And how can I help the play? Or how can you help the play? So right now, right here, what we're seeing is, if we dissect that a little bit more, is what section I feel that we're covering. Well, the opponents are pushing us here, so we're defending our uh, net. So we're covering our net. And the section of the field we can cover is right in front of us, about to the top of the goal box. Roughly, that's where we cover. So we can block the pass, we can block the shot. So we're covering a lot of things here. And what play can I make? The second part of the question is, what play can I make? And... Right here, the play that you can make is waiting to see what the outcome is on this 50 or this whatever. Because this angle, it's really, really, really hard to get the ball in from this angle. I've only seen Daniel or little pros like hit it off the post. So that's probably not logical in this situation. So there's no real play that we can make here. So now we ask, what play can we help with? How can we help with the play? And now our reaction here should be oh i can back up the 50 if that happens or you know if the ball gets past my teammate then i can be the one that goes or if this does go in how did it go in like how did it get past me i wasn't there to help the play because oh like let's say ball pinches and the legacy here uh lands on the ball and it goes in well we couldn't have helped that play very well like that's just a tough situation so now that we're out of that situation now we're thinking still, like, we're always going to be thinking, what man are you? Like, what position am I in? What is my role right now? So the questions here for what man are you, like, what I'm always asking myself is, am I first man or second man in twos? And right now we're first man. So now what is your role? My role as first man is to depossess the opponents or to make the opponents give the ball to my teammate. So in like a, or ease, ease a rush, ease whatever. And the third question is, did I help my teammate? So right here, we're first man. We kind of rush it a little bit, but in the end, overall, we do get it up and over. So right here, we're first man. And our job here is now that we're on the ball is to take possession and go and attempt to attack uh, the other net. But we can't do this from this exact spot. And we have a possibility of just passing to the opponents. So that's not good. So digging up and around is good. This is a very smart decision. And yeah, so our role still here is to continue pressure, 
and have the opponents like be awkward and stuff. Okay, this sets another rule as the first man is to make the opponents awkward, like be a threat essentially. And the third part is, did you help your teammate? Yes, I helped my teammate. I let him get boost and go back and get into a better position for our team. And look, they scored off of that. So now if we skip ahead just a little bit to another goal, like let's say, is like roughly this situation here. So we have a another defensive spot. I'm gonna ignore this part here. We have another defensive spot and we could easily get scored on here. Not that we can do much about this, right? We can't do much about this, but we can do something. So in these spots here, I would at least, at least try to take these two pads. Like, oh, maybe the ball goes back a little bit. This guy, because I don't put pressure on him. Like I don't do, uh, like what man am I? And, and the next part is reading the options is especially for this play. Like this play right here is a reading the options play. And very quickly, reading the options are what play can they make? How much boost do they have, roughly? And where am I on the field and how can I change that outcome? Those are three questions I ask myself when I'm reading a play, trying to read the play, is, you know, as I just said, what play can they make? Like, let's say the opponents are on the ball here, like perfectly here. What can they do? Well, now that the angle is too fine, well, they have to pass this now. And, okay, what play can they make? They have to pass it. Two, how much boost do they have? Well, it looks like they're just about to grab 100. So, they got full boost now and they're going to be able to pass it mid. I don't know, like, in this situation, we'll say we don't know how much boost the second guy has. So, I got to do something to disrupt that play or to get involved in that play. And... That's the third part is where am I on the field and how can I change that outcome? Right now we are the last man back. Physically, we are the furthest person away from the play. But we still can have an impact on the play. It may, like Giving it your all at every chance you can is, I would say, more beneficial than just giving up, even if it's an easy goal. Like, let's say this, this, ball's, this net's open, our teammate isn't there, we're the first one back. Uh, it's still better to attempt to get there because what if they both double commit and are in the back of your net and then, oh wait, we can have a counterattack and score an open net. So right here is how can I change the outcome? You can change the outcome by disregarding the corner boost because even if you get this 100 boost, if they score, what's the point of having it? So you can grab this pad, this pad, and this pad, maybe. And let's just see where that would have landed us. That would have landed us a demo. A possible demo because look at this we're about we're even a further ahead of legacy here roughly nah we're like a car's length behind him like if it was a line it'd be he'd be like right here ish so like demoable so let's say we take this boost and this boost and then we cut a little bit towards here use that 12 that 24 boost we picked up that's a demo and then we go back to rotation and positioning of what role are you and did you help your teammate in twos, you always want to be helping your teammate, whether that's a demo, a, a flick to create a problem for the defense, like whatever it may be. Like that's how, that's how I think of it. Like if I get a demo here that releases my teammate of pressure and oh wait, if this ball bounces like this and he can flip into the boost, like it all comes back around. Like this boost can turn this play into a goal for them into a goal for us. So like everything can have it a further out. It's like a butterfly effect in like until dawn or something like that. So like you always got to be thinking like ahead, like, and then it can easily go to point four is counterattacks. Like, can I score off of it? Like, can I score the open net or whatever? Can I score the counterattack? How many are back? And can I beat the opponents to the ball? If that is true like you can beat the ball or beat the opponents to the ball and there's none back that's a goal that's an easy goal if there's one back but i can still beat them to the ball then i have to create a play create a diversion which can lead to point number five which is speed of play can i like these are the three things that i'm thinking of when i think speed of play is can i physically keep up with the speed of the play and am i using too much boost like your boost management 
isn't exactly directly correlated to your speed it can also be to your positioning and your rotation a lot of things intersect in this game maybe because you're using too much boost you're out of position or maybe because you're using not less like too little boost like you're too finite with your boost uh maybe you're not in as good a position or like you're out of position because because you use less boost like if you use like 12 here uh to get to the ball faster you could have created a better play or something like that instead of like saving your boost i'm not telling you to go 100 boost into the ball every single time but and can i speed this play up this third part is something that i didn't do very well for the longest time and it's can i speed up the play and is it beneficial to speed up the play like with this counter attack like imagine your teammate gets the boost this ball is already like already here like the ball could already be in because of things i said before and now we're going back for this boost that we don't need to but for some reason it sets us up and why does it set it okay. i have not seen this replay before so See, and these guys are overcommit because they're not thinking of what man are they, what role, and they're not reading the options of the play. Like, if we take a look at this guy here, he's trying to get too ahead of the play, and then he realizes, oh, I have no boost. Like, if the play is moving forward, grab the pads, but then he's like, I'm greedy, I want boost. And he doesn't read the play of, what is my teammate doing? Like... Okay, my teammate just has the ball mid, like middle-ish, like away from him. He can't get to that. So he's not reading that part of the play. And he's like, oh, I got the under boost. It goes all the way back to when the other team, like this team, could have scored on the blue team. Or, yeah, the breakaway that could have happened. Like, oh, congrats, you have the 100 boost. The ball's in your net. Like, what does 100 boost? Now 75 boost usage to just go in your net. Like that's that's kind of what I think about in like situations like this. So it looks like here we're off onto the defensive right away after kickoff. I want to teach you guys a little something about kickoffs. So I'm not the best at kickoffs, but I will say I do know quite a bit about kickoffs. So if it's something like this, this person here can do quite a lot of things. Like if left is going, the obvious left goes. If you don't know that left goes and left always goes. Uh, a right character here can grab this pad and like flip forward. Like let's say it's a, a regular kickoff. Uh, like no no random calls. Like you can grab this boost. Like you can grab the corner part of it and then flip to like right here. And guess where that would have gotten you. That would have gotten you right here. And now you can drive into the ball, because this guy's just going to be in the air. You can drive in the ball, hit this ball here, grab this boost, maybe get a demo if this guy's challenging you. And then, boom, open that. But of course, we don't do that. And now we're on the defensive. Go save. And now we overcommit. Now this is a part of the thing of uh, reading the options. In something like this, like, okay, you didn't get a good shot. Now, in this situation, I'm thinking, okay, what options do they have? They're not going too fast, so maybe that they're going to pop it up or fake it or whatever. Like, they're going to try and make me do something. Like, they're going to try and make me waste my positioning. And that's why rotations and positioning is really, really, like, important. Because if you're out of position, your rotation is going to be off. Or your rotation is going to be off because you were out of position. Like, you can reverse the roles no matter what. Something is off there. But for this, like, that doesn't really have to do with this. It's the reading the options. Like, what play can they make? What play can they make off of this? Their first guy. Now, if we also think of it as what man are they. The f their first man hit the ball at you and left the play. So he's probably going to try and get 100 boosts from somewhere. So he could be your corner, the right side corner, or his back right, or his back corner. And now you see this guy here. So now we're doing a thing called speeding up the play. Because we hit it so hard. Which we want to do, because now it's a 2v1 situation, technically. 
but we have one guy to beat. So with this, we hit it a little too hard, which is unfortunate. And then we're, we panic. We panic here like this is clearly a panic jump because we're like, uh-oh, I got to get back to the ball. But if we slow it down a second here, we realize what can what play can they make? Well, they can make two things at this level. Like, I don't know the mindset of Diamond, but I think here, flick, or not flick, a uh, fake, a pass, maybe, j maybe, a general sense of hitting it to the middle, or like another big boom over my head. What does he do? He goes for that weird little pass, maybe fake, light touch thing, we'll say. Let's say he goes for light touch. We are then out of position, but we also look for, we also then get back into position with looking for a play. This is what I wish a lot of people understood was even if you miss the ball, you can be in a better position because of it. Like because the way that he flipped into this, like into the, the ball that went middle, this gives the chance for his teammate to boom him, boom it at him. So just FYI, keep your ball cam on. Because if this guy put his ball cam off and went for middle boot mid boost, then this play doesn't this this threat doesn't happen, right? This chance doesn't happen. Look at that, it goes back mid. Right. That's the main thing. So if we skip forward a little bit. I see why they got scored on. So right here, we're not thinking what man are we. We're not reading the options of the play. We're not rotating. And honestly, the speed of play might be... It's either a little too slow or we're just trying to be ahead of the play a little too often. What I mean by ahead of the play is that we're... In this, in this exact situation, we're literally ahead of the play. But in more of a sense of, you want to move with the ball. Like, if the ball... We kind of want to shadow the ball. Like, in all definitions of the meaning, shadow. We kind of want to be behind this ball. We want to be, like... We don't want to make our camera awkward as well. So, we get dusted here, and it's unfortunately behind us. So... What do we do different here? We grab this boost, that's fine. But instead of doing this weird turn where we instantly turn for the ball, we can leave it for a teammate because if you see two people in the corner, A, that's, this is a double commit here, essentially. We can turn upfield for this, but if we do, I want us to take not such a wide path, but a more direct path to the ball. Like, because we come out here and we go like, whoa. And then we get up here where like, well, obviously I can't go into the ball because I just hit it back at the at him. So it's like, if I go this way, boom, it goes that way. So if we take more of a direct path and instead of a wide curve path and our teammates flipped in the corner and he's not able to recover right away, it makes it really, really hard. So I would say that is a rotation and positioning because we're not thinking what section of the field are we covering. We're thinking of where the ball is and what play can I make? Oh, I can make a, not a great play, but a play to get the ball out, right? And now can I help the play? I can't really help the play because I'm a little too in front of it. Let's see why they got scored on again. That's a good bump. Okay. So an attempted save didn't really work. So why do we have zero boost? This whole kickoff here. Okay. We're sticking on the ball, which isn't bad. Our teammate gets red and then gets bumped. Okay, that's just unfortunate. And we ignored all the, all the pads. So that's just a pad pickup and that's a save. So let's see why they scored though. Okay, I'll see why they scored. So, ball gets hit above him. So now we should be thinking, what is our rotation? What is our positioning? Rotation is, okay, our teammate looks like he wants to go. He can't go. Or he, he can't go because I'm going, right? With car movements and everything, you kind of want to dictate what you're thinking. Like, how you, how you move is how you think, right? If you're thinking, oh, I want to go for the ball, 
you kind of dictate to your teammate with like car movements that you're going for the ball or with comms, right? If you're in a party or in a VC with your teammate, let them know that you're going, please. <laughs> but yeah. That might have also been a uh, speed of play. Just a little bit faster than the opponents. Little dooms, little doomsy dish. All right, all right. Now, how did they end up losing this game? <laughs> okay, so it comes out of the corner. We're covering, we're a little too, we're looking for a pass that can't happen because we're not reading the options of our teammate and of the play, right? The ball does pop out, but we're covering too much of the middle and not the direct cover, right? Because if we're covering, whoops, if we're covering more, this it's more of a shallow, I don't want to say shallow, it's kind of a shallow angle on the goals because we're only covering like this section. But if we're looking at the angle, yes, they hit it wide around us and that's probably not going in. So if we just cover something like this, then we get to the ball a lot sooner. This is about being a little bit faster, and then we don't get dunked. That's that's the main thing. We don't get dunked if we cover it a little bit differently. If we don't go so wide here, if we don't turn our nose away from the play, because then we have to turn back in, right? If we focus on keeping our nose like... Because right here, we're, we're thinking this is going to slingshot off of both our cars, right? But... Then we have to adjust right away and then we can't get to where we need to be at the ball so then we get dunked so of course there's going to be things that aren't on our list that are just like mistakes that happen but you could qualify that as you know positioning and rotation right i don't know why we're jumping at that all right let's see here the other goal we're, we're ahead of the play yet again. Now we're out of position and our rotations are going to be kind of shocked. Because if we look at where we commit on this play with that, we look to go for pass, we miss. So now our objective should be leave the play back up our teammate. We cut back in on the play. The ball is not coming to you. You have to delete everyone on the field and this ball has to have a perfect bounce for this to be a opportunity here. So instead of being in front of the play again, because look at this, we're like a bajillion car lengths ahead of the play. If we're sitting more like right here, like, like on this darker square, then we can move over. Like we're in front of the play, so we have to go back into the play from a worse angle. We miss the ball, unfortunate. Let me flip away. I just get rid of this ball. If we use our like, this is why this play like sucks for me, is because this is where we're like going back to what man and reading the options. So are you first man, second man? You're first man here, and you're gonna try and disrupt the play. We're not doing that right away. And with the reading options part, what play can they make? Well, they can make several plays. They can pass it mid. They can shoot. They can just hold the ball. They can dribble. They can flick. Like, this is a very bad spot for the defender, especially when we're not challenging right away. So, if we go to reading options again, how much boost do they have? They probably have a lot of boost because we had to go back to our mid and maybe they grabbed the 100. And then where am I on the field and can I change that outcome? If we want to force them to pass it, which is still a very poor option, uh, we have to force the ball off of them. And by that, we have to challenge. Or we can indicate to our teammate that, you know, we don't want to challenge and we we should use the other guy, our teammate, Webb, uh, to force the ball off of them. They do that. It just took until a point blank shot <laughs> to do that. And then we can dribble it on the line. And if we follow through with our momentum, right, we have momentum going. We stop a little bit. And then if we push it through, if we don't use that boost, and we flip through the ball and we push it to the corner... This ball's cleared, 
and it gets past the other guy, and then we can start that speed of play counterattack. Let's see. How did, how did the orange team defend this one? So this is a counterattack play. We are yet again. We're trying to. We're trying too hard to get ahead of the play. We're like, okay, we're not scanning the field. We're not looking at our options. We're lo not looking at what's given to us. So right now, what's given to us is a half boost teammate and one full boost opponent and whatever else, right? We don't know, right? And we are low boost. So this is a pretty poor situation regardless. Honestly, for me, I'd probably just full dive on this as well. It might not be the smartest decision, but if I can get at least a 50 here, I'd also pick up a lot more boosts. It's also unfortunate there. It's just a really bad spot we let ourselves in. Very, very poor spot. But that can go to counterattack, being the play, speed, like a lot of factors. I probably should just rip, probably would have just ripped that. Because if we think about it here, I don't know why we're doing that. It's like we're creating or making our car go faster and then we're instantly slopping. So it's, it's redundant to use the boost and the flip if we're just going to stop. If we're going to do that, we might as well just go full force into the ball. And then it hits zero, clock hits zero. That's the average player for you. I hope you guys took away some some sort of thing from this video. If you did, let me know down in the comments section. I read all the comments, so yeah. But uh, yeah, I don't want to take up any more of your time. I appreciate you guys watching to the end if you did. And uh, have a good rest of your day, night, whatever time is for you. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.